Welcome to part two of Marketing Procurement's Value Internally. I'm Lindsay Sandozzi from Source One Management Service. Just to recap, Source One was founded about 20 years ago. We're based out of Willow Grove, Pennsylvania, and have a staff of about 40 strategic sourcing specialists on hand. Uh, our capabilities include strategic sourcing, cost reduction, and we're the decision support team for our clients. We've saved over $1 billion in hard dollar cost savings and average about 18% savings across multiple categories. We have subject matter experts in over 100 different spend categories and have serviced over 500 companies. We also have a blog, The Strategic Sorcerer. We have a free e-commerce tool, wyid.com, and we also wrote the book on managing indirect spend. In part one, we looked at the various stages of procurement and supply chain departments, as well as some of the objections that we all hear. In part two, we're going to discuss ways of overcoming those challenges. The best way that we have found to overcome these objections is knowing that the best defense is a good offense, and that's using tools like reporting, transparency, and training. Effectively marketing a department, highlighting your skills and successes are what will affect buy-in at the onset, and as they build, will give you leverage to conduct large scope initiatives. Let's look at some of the effective ways to market your department. When it comes to reporting, make sure the measurements are objective. Focus on measuring progress, develop consensus, and provide accountability in your work. Reporting can come in many formats. For example, in some cases you will be asked to tie back your work to a particular cost center in your organization. This helps the end users and the stakeholders gain a better understanding of your sourcing results on their budget. This type of granular reporting can help provide an efficient means for tracking information, but it can become labor intensive if you have multiple projects occurring concurrently. In addition to granular reporting, another option is summary reporting that you can use to demonstrate your success to the executive committee or other high-level contacts. This type of reporting is typically done on the spend and supplier level. In addition to granular and summary reporting, there is also compliance reports and loss savings reports that can be utilized. Compliance reports give an indication of who is purchasing from the correct supplier and reports those facilities that are not conforming. Loss savings reports add more context to the compliance reports. They show the savings opportunity and loss dollars and are no normally at the department or user level. The next area for overcoming these challenges is being transparent. Project transparency simply means keeping interested parties in the loop. While the preferred methods of doing this vary from organization to organization, at Source One, we find that our clients get the most benefit out of weekly status calls. Invariably, your own transparency methods will involve some sort of communication exchange, so it's best to set up a protocol at the start of a project. Here are some concerns we always address with any of our projects. Preferred method of communication, having the right contacts, including their phone and email address. Know and understand the expected response time for any email requests or phone messages. Also understand the timelines around turnaround times for reports, legal contracts, and also understand escalation channels so roadblocks can be addressed quickly. The purpose of being transparent allows you to prevent some of these challenges. We need to educate the supply chain about existing initiatives. This way, we're not duplicating efforts, the vendors aren't confused, and it ultimately will have an effect on the savings result. We need to make decisions in a timely manner. Decision making in a timely manner prevents extended timelines and delay results. Including all end users and decision makers at the beginning of the process is key. This way, you're not missing any requirements or specifications, you understand the usage, and it prevents causing a restart. Successful training tactics ensure the stakeholder clearly understands the goal, it teaches people about the process and procedures that need to be followed, it may also require individuals to be trained in a specific software 
to identify areas in a supply chain that need to be evaluated, and it can be beneficial to conduct training on the sourcing process to demonstrate the importance of the process. And now back to the case study that we started with in this presentation. Tim Cook consistently drove innovation and delivered value from his supply chain and procurement operations, which led his career path to CEO. By following a sourcing process, demonstrating success, and following a change management approach, Apple was able to cut the manufacturing time of computers in half, reduce the number of strategic suppliers by 75% by looking at things at negotiating steep discounts and enhancing payment terms. They were able to reduce the number of warehouses from 19 to 10 and reduce their inventory by 80% in the first nine months. In conclusion, companies are moving towards strategic endeavors. Supply chain has a unique skill set to help them. Supply chain doesn't automatically get included in company decisions, so it's important to be collaborative and to increase your visibility in order to be involved in those decisions. Success on tactical endeavors must be marketed to gain buy-in for strategic undertakings. Collaboration is key. Once an organization is aware of supply chain success, there will be an increase in their level of involvement on future work. And finally, it's important, as always, to create value and get results. And that concludes part two of Marketing Procurement's Value Internally. I'm Lindsay Fandozzi from Source One Management Services. Thank you for watching.